Thank you all. So my work initially started with using satellite imagery to map ancient landscapes. I've been working in Egypt for 15 years. And I have to say that uh, I, I never expected to be doing looting mapping. But I got started um, almost, almost at the beginning of my PhD work. The site you see in the lower left-hand corner is called Tel Tabilla. It's located in the northeast Egyptian delta, about two hours uh, to the northeast of Cairo. It's a multi-period archaeological site, dates to primarily to the late period, so roughly 600 BC. And when the Napoleonic expedition visited Egypt in the 1800s, the site was fairly large, over 1,000 by 1,000 meters in size. Over time, due to agricultural growth and encroachment, the site has been decreasing and decreasing in size. And you can actually see just how much the site has shrunk in the last 200 years. This is one site in Egypt. And look, look, look at the number of, of square meters it's shrunk. And we've been able to track this using old maps, old spy photographs from the 1960s, declassified information, um, aerial photographs as well as satellite imagery. And as I continued with my thesis research, I realized that this was not just the story at Tel Tabilla. This is the story of many if not all, of Egypt's archaeological sites. And this is not just the story of Egypt. This is something that's going on all over the world. Of course, my work focuses in Egypt. But we're beginning to do work in other countries. And this is a global problem. So that's the takeaway I want you to have today, is that, that this is something that uh, is going on all over the world. And we now have the technology tools and resources to map the problem and begin to strategize about ways of stopping it, because ours is truly the last generation that will be able to do something about it before these sites are gone forever. Now, when we think of Egypt, of course, we always think of Egypt's greatest discovery, that of the tomb of King Tut. But what's interesting, and no one really knows this, is that the tomb of King Tut was not totally intact. It had actually been looted in antiquity. So that's something else that we need to bring up, that a lot of looting that goes on um, on archaeological sites, uh, this is not a modern phenomenon. This is something that's been going on. This is a very, very human trait. And when Howard Carter opened King Tut's tomb and looked at the vessels that contained unguents, so ancient perfumes and creams, there were actually finger marks. You have to think, if you're going to take something from King Tut's tomb and you walk into the market with a gold scarab with King Tut's name on it, people are going to wonder where it came from versus a handful of an unguent that you can easily sell on. So I'm just bringing that up as an example to show that there's a great history of this going on in Egypt. So in January of 2011, my career changed quite a bit. Um, following the Egyptian Revolution, we started hearing rumors of archaeological sites being looted. We didn't know what was rumor and what was truth. And of course, everyone here knows about the Cairo Museum with objects being taken. The Egyptian government has done an incredible job in tracking these objects down. They've, they've managed to find many of the objects that were taken, and they're actually going on display at the Cairo Museum. Um, and with support from National Geographic, as well as Digital Globe, their very large provider of high-resolution satellite data, we were able to get a hold of satellite images showing that there was looting going on. So the question that we started asking is, what's the scale? Where is it happening? 
and why is it happening? And as I've been doing this research, I've learned this is not a straightforward black or white issue. What would we do if we were villagers and times were hard? What would we do to feed our families? So this is an issue that's tied in very deeply with economic development, with local opportunities for individuals, education. Um, we can't really point the finger at any one individual or any one entity. This is something that is much more complicated than that. My work um, started off being focused on two main sites, one area being the Pyramid Fields just south of Cairo, and an area called El Lisht, uh, which is about two hours south of Cairo. It's a very well-known zone for uh, the Middle Kingdom, roughly 1800 BC. But since then, it, it's expanded. I'll talk more about that shortly. And here you see before and after imagery. So we have to be very careful when we're doing this mapping and recognizing when looting has happened, when it has taken place, and acknowledging that a lot of looting that's gone on in Egypt and elsewhere, of course, has been going on for a long time. Fortunately, I had really good satellite imagery coverage for most of the main areas of Egypt. And also, there's, there's wonderful open source online access to satellite data with resources like Google Earth and NASA's Visible Earth program. This data is available to everyone all over the world. But you can see comparing this image. This is from South Abu Sir, just a little bit south of Cairo. This is an image from 2009. The image on the right is an image from February 15th, 2011. And you can see there are about 220 looting pits. It's pretty easy to, to see it. You see a black rectangle surrounded by a donut of earth. And we go in, we actually use a, use a tool, draw the number of uh, looting pits. You can actually see in the upper right-hand corner bulldozing marks. Which, which is, again, a sign of more organized activity. So, so this is another thing we're tracking. Who's doing the looting? Is it gangs of youths going in, digging up a few looting pits, trying to find treasure versus organized criminal activity? And what we're seeing in Egypt, and indeed in many parts of the world, is that this looting is changing. It, it is a global problem, and it is something that is, has deep connections with global criminal activities. So with the support of, uh, of, of Deborah at the Capital Archaeological Institute and the International Coalition for the Protection of Egyptian Antiquities, at the very kind invitation of Egypt's foreign ministry, in May of 2011, we went to Egypt to meet with a number of officials and also to visit some of these looting pits on the ground. A really critical part of satellite imagery, of course, is ground truthing. You go and you examine for yourself to see is what the satellite imagery is showing what you think it is. What people might not know is the incredible deep knowledge that local people in Egypt have of their history. And many individuals, um, as it turns out, who were involved with the looting, or at least we think were involved with the looting, had experience with archaeological excavations. They knew where to look for tombs. You can see us standing in front of it. Um, that's definitely my, my unhappy face. I prefer to be digging. Um, and you can see it's fairly deep. They know exactly where to go. And so the big question then is, were these tombs intact? How can we really know if when we get there, they're empty? Well, you can see where I'm standing on the left-hand side. Um, you can see bits of human bone, little bits from sarcophagi. Uh, broken pottery. By the way, you, can, you can't see it from, from, from this picture, but they had fresh breaks. So I think many of these tombs that have been looted um, actually were partially to almost fully intact. So this gets at, at a really crucial issue for mapping archaeological site looting all over the world. The most important thing that we need is an inventory, not just of the objects, which is absolutely crucial, but an inventory of the number of archaeological sites in that country. And what may be shocking to hear is that there's no single country in the entire world that has a comprehensive database of every single known archaeological site. This is the 21st century. This, this information should be open. It should be online. Um, and we simply don't have this information. 
So I want to show you a little bit about how much things have changed in the last three years at one particular site and then talk to you about what we're, what we're doing about this right now and how we're hoping that this work will change public perceptions um, and, and hopefully in working in conjunction with the Egyptian government um, begin to protect some of these sites that are under threat. This is an image of a very well-known archaeological zone, Dashur. There are a series of Middle Kingdom pyramids. Again, these are from roughly 1800 BC. The top image is from 2009. You can see the tip of a pyramid, just the black edge, just to the south of the image. You see what look like looting pits. Those aren't. Those are actually exposed tomb shafts. And things look OK. You don't see much looting. Flash ahead to May of 2011. We're starting to see some looting pits, not many, maybe 15 or 20, not too bad. 2012, maybe 100 to 150 pits. But 2013, things start getting really bad. We see about 450 to 500 looting pits. And even more concerning is a significant extension um, of the cemetery. This is an illegal cemetery. Um, this is a big problem in Egypt and in many parts of the world. There simply aren't enough places for the Egyptians to bury their dead. And so there's a lot of illegal encroachment on archaeological sites. What do we do about this? And how do we begin to map this problem? With generous funding from National Geographic, we are in the midst of the first comprehensive uh, looting mapping project for an entire country. We're using satellite imagery that's openly available and online um, using Google Earth as well as additional sources. And we're going back 12 years in time from 2002 to the present. And we're looking at every known archaeological site in Egypt, plus many thousands of others that I've been able to find through my research, and looking at the history of site looting um, all over Egypt. And what's fascinating um, right now, if you don't know the time period of a looted site, you simply can't um, begin to think about what objects might be looted from it. And you can't, uh, you can't inform Interpol and the Carabinieri and US Customs and international authorities as to what might be taken. What we do know from all of these thousands of known sites is their time period. So we can go to international entities and say, we have 57 sites from 600 BC that have extensive site looting. Here is a typical tomb group from the late period. You know, it would have a, a stone sarcophagus. Here are the types of pottery that come from that particular site. Um, here are the shabtis. Here's the, here are other objects and artifacts from that time period. So we, we can begin from space, even though we can't zoom in and see a single pot. Based on the time period known from that site, we, we can begin to come up with inventories for international authorities to look for. What about more broadly? Well, with, with generous funding from the National Science Foundation, um, I will be working directly with the Egyptian uh, Ministry of Antiquities to set up training programs for young Egyptians. Um, these are the men and the women that are really the true unsung culture heroes of post and pre-revolution Egypt. Um, there's a, a gentleman named Omar Farouk, who's a very dear friend of mine. Um, he's our, our head fixer in Luxor. He's been, his family's been doing archaeological work in Egypt for 150 years. His great-grandfather was Petri's uh, rice, so the, the, the chief boss, Egyptian, who worked with, um, with, with Petri, one of the great, the grandfather of Egyptian archaeology. And Omer and a group of young men just after the revolution started, uh, were under gunfire and attack at Karnak Temple in Luxor. And they actually managed to fight off a gang of looters, risking their own lives to protect this, this site. There's so many dozens of stories like that all over Egypt. So we're hoping through educational initiatives to work with young Egyptian men and women, to provide them tools and resources like Google Earth um, and other resources for them to be able to take part in protecting their sites. So more broadly, what do we do? We're hoping that this is just the first step. What we want to do is we want to create crowdsourcing um, opportunities for the world. To, so it's not just me and my, and my students doing this work in my lab, but actually students and, and, and individuals from all over the world can help in the, look, in the search for, uh, for, for looting everywhere. We also want to emphasize just how important it is for countries all over the world to have good site inventories. Because if you don't know where your sites are, how in the world can you begin 
to protect them. So while I would love to get back to my search for settlements and pyramids, um, this, is, this is very important for me and uh, certainly something that I know I will be devoting the rest of my life to doing. And with new technologies and new advancements, um, this is something that simply would not have been possible 15 to 20 years ago. So I think the urgency is here. It's, it's, it's time for our generation to do something about this because as we've been able to map, you know, every day we're mapping thousands of looting pits. We're, we're seeing a, an over 1,000% increase in site looting since the start of the revolution and billions of dollars in antiquities that we've estimated to, to date that have been stolen. And if we think this is Egypt alone and you begin to scale that all over the world, um, I, I couldn't give a number right now off the top of my head, but it would be very large. So this is a global issue, this is, and, it's, and the time is now to do something about it. Thank you very much.